Okay, class, I just wanted to give a little bit of expanded information about the coercion cycle. Um, Dr. Latham, in the video that you'll see later uh, throughout this week, goes into some of the details about the beginnings of it. Um, however, my research during my master's program and my PhD program were all about coercion and the development of oppositional defiant disorder in kids. So there's a lot more information that can be learned from the coercion cycle, how to interrupt it, how to um, utilize skills and tools to um, make family relationships more appealing and more um, happy. So I wanted to share some of that with you guys today. First of all, we found through the research that the coercion cycle is the nexus or the beginning of the development of oppositional defiant disorder, conduct disorder, or antisocial aggression. Um, so if any person has those disorders or has those types of tendencies, it's likely a result of the coercion cycle and the coercion cycle being present in their interactions with adults. Um, it used to be thought of that anybody who was diagnosed with um, oppositional defiant disorder, about 90% of those people would develop conduct disorder and become criminals. Now we know that's not the case, as long as we can interrupt it soon enough and effectively enough. Um, Dr. Latham talked about how the coercion cycle is always bad. I'm gonna show how sometimes it actually just comes out as a natural course of parenting. And if you think about the scripture about um, fighting against the natural man, this is what we need to do. So a lot of parents fall into this really quickly without realizing it, and I'll go over how this develops. But the most important thing to, to understand is adults really cannot grasp this cycle, um, especially teachers, especially parents of teenagers. And I don't want to disparage all of you who are parents of teenagers or teachers, but a lot of adults um, have a hard time understanding that by taking sort of the authority stance, we're actually playing into the coercion cycle. And I'll get into more of that later as we talk about some of the ways to def diffuse the coercion cycle and increase positive interactions with children. So let me go over and show you what the coercion cycle is and how it starts. If we were to think about the coercion cycle, um, so Dr. Lathan had said that the coercion cycle starts at about 14 months, um, for when a child is 14 months old. That is somewhat true, but it can even develop much earlier. So let me show you what we're talking about. So if a child or a parent gives a command, think of a crying baby as a command, that is the very beginning of the coercion cycle. Um, it's also communication. So anytime a parent or a child gives communication with the expectation of compliance from one or the other, then that develops into the coercion cycle. Um, so if compliance takes place, so then we have other interactions continue that are positive. Um, if the compliance is not there, what we get is escalation of negative behavior. So the first part of the coercion cycle where we're talking about um, parent-child interactions and this little section here, this is the good part of the coercion cycle. This is where we have more information about how to prevent the coercion cycle from getting embedded into families. Now, let me show you what happens further as we go into more of the coercion cycle. So the command is escalated by the, either the child or the parent. Think of a crying baby um, or a toddler who's throwing a tantrum. If compliance takes place on the part of the parent, so the parent gives in and gives the child whatever they're looking for, whatever they want, or the child complies with the demand or command of the, the parent in an escalated manner, other interactions continue in a positive direction. If it doesn't happen, so if there's no compliance, then you get a continuous repeat of this escalation of, of commands. Um, when that continues with no compliance, the escalation continues even greater. Um, and just like the previous um, sort of level of this, if compliance takes place at this level, you have other interactions continue. Now, the f really important thing to think about is, let's say you, they get to the second level of coercion. When the next interaction takes place, that's where they're going to go first. 
because they've learned that that works. So they're going to escalate to that place first. And then if parent or child becomes defiant or wanting to be the authority or whatnot, then that will continue the escalation of negative behaviors. So this escalation continues about one to three times. The unfortunate piece is this can go on to multiple levels. It doesn't matter how many levels it goes into. It always inevitably results in aggression or violence. And when aggression and violence takes place, we get acquiescence, which is compliance, but it's a compliance in a negative fashion. And then we loop back into other interactions that continue. So um, once you have the, the solid foundation of the coercion cycle in a family or in a child, some really important things change about that person. First of all, there's an overly inclusive classification. So parents or adults will almost always look at this person or this child as a defiant child or a strong-willed child or a troublemaker. And then negative attribution, they will start to think about every behavior this child is doing in a negative way. Even if it's not innately negative in and of itself, they will attribute it to some negative um, coercive, manipulative fashion. And then you get punishment acceleration. So families or teachers or schools have sort of a no tolerance policy. Once they see a very small interaction or a very small um, indication that the child's going to be defiant or non-compliant, they give the, the harshest, most difficult punishment so that way they can stop the negative behavior from escalating. If, that, if we've gotten to that point, then non-responsiveness to social stimuli starts to happen. And this is when you see teenagers develop antisocial aggressive behaviors. They're not gonna respond to any positive interactions from anybody, teachers, friends, um, we get uh, adults. And that's why they start deviating to negative peer associations. And then last but not least, you see emotion regulation difficulties that start to take place. Kids who, or adults who are entrenched in the, in the coercion cycle have a very difficult time regulating their own emotions because they were never taught. Now, that's a lot of negative stuff, but I wanna talk about some solutions. The first and, and easiest solution is to ignore negative interactions as much as possible short of violence. So if violence takes place, obviously you gotta take care of it. You gotta make sure it stops, but anything else, try to ignore it. Um, introduce non-contingent positive interactions. What that means is regardless of the child's behavior, regardless of what is going on in their life, regardless of how much they talk back or, or are negative or defiant, there's always a positive interaction that they can bank on. They can make sure that but for my kids, it's we read books to them every night, um, or sometimes we go on dates with them. And that date is not contingent upon their behavior at school or at home. It's just a given as a, as a member of the family and as a child. So we need to make sure that that takes place constantly. And then one way to do that is to look at maintaining a seven to one positive to negative ratio. Having seven positive interactions to every one negative interaction helps to diffuse the coercion cycle. And last but not least, decrease your requests or commands to the child to about five requests per hour. That may sound ridiculous, that may sound impossible, but the research has shown that if parents or adults request over five requests per hour, it will most likely lead to the coercion cycle and aggression. In fact, um, after you reach that five per hour benchmark, then children's non-compliance and defiance goes through the roof. But if you keep it at that five per hour, then their compliance is really, really, really solid. So if you have any questions about any of that, let me know. I'd be happy to share the resources and um, articles about this. But this is some of the information that I wanted you to have about the coercion cycle. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.